Hey guys, I'm just uh, out of town for work. I'm just heading down the road to Limbler Station or Homestead, I think it is, and uh, come across this really cool tree that I want to show you. Um, classic uh, Central Desert spirit, this tree. Have a look at this. Look at that. So she's uh, been ripped up, but uh, still got some roots in the ground has shedded all the branches that uh, are now pointing the wrong direction and uh, have shot a whole bunch of branches straight up beautiful just goes to show you can get knocked down and still get up again or you can stay down and survive I suppose I don't really know the, uh, what to take away from that other than just just keep growing no matter what circumstance you're in. Take it easy. I am horribly, horribly stuck. I'm at Limbler Station or Limbler Homestead or whatever it is. And, um, or just 1.4 k's out of it. And I was coming down the track and some of the trackers are getting a bit soft. I wasn't too worried, I was pushing through it, but this particular section of the track is really, really soft. It's not wet, it's dry, it's just really powdery. Let me show you. So this is the track and you can just sorta, of, it's really, really fine powder. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that, but have a look at this. I've deployed the track grabbers, I had them in the car. down on the axles haven't deployed the winch yet I'm just about to try that I hope you can see that but that's the track grabber strap right with no track grabber on it again track grabber strap there's a track grabber on the behind the wheel there's a strap at the front of the wheel super helpful I am just about to deploy the winch I'm gonna try and get myself out of this um, first thing I did was deploy the track grabbers to see if I could get out. They haven't been any help. Uh, obviously I, I jumped into four wheel drive quickly and everything first, but yeah, track grabbers first to help just see if I could drive myself out. I couldn't. And then uh, rang the boss straight away to let him know so someone knows that I'm stuck because yeah that's important and uh, the next trick is to try and find a tree that's big enough that I can winch to and that's going to be a drama because I think they're potentially all too far away I mean despite them being at bad angles just made it of legit run out of winch right at the tree <sighs> now I don't have any of the extra gear to save this poor tree I'm sorry tree but I'm gonna have to try and use her anyway all right so there we go winch is attached to the tree Cars over there on the other side of the fence. Quick dive back under. Winch cable. We've got to lock the winch back into gear. Now this is the problem. So I've got to be really, really careful doing this. I need to turn as much into it as I can. the uh, clutch for the winch here oh. Mm. oh there it goes oh. 
damn pipe. So I've got my winch controller. There's the socket in there that I've got to connect it to. Winch is on, in gear, and I've just got to really turn into this and try and get it out. Now I don't have any of my filming gear with me. I'm really sorry about this, but I'm gonna have to try and do the best I can. All right, we're out. Winch has come through. Swallow to fly. Oh. I just need to go recover the winch cable again. And uh, hopefully I can get myself through to the next part. All right. All right, I'll just get this cable off. Thankfully I haven't done much damage to the tree. I'm genuinely pleased about that. You find the biggest tree you can and you don't want to hurt them if you can avoid it. Yes, you can say they are only trees, but let's face it, you know, like what happens when someone else gets stuck here? Maybe they'll need that tree again. Maybe you believe that trees, you know, don't deserve to be hurt, harmed by us. I think both valid points happy to go with either but I'm just glad in this example that we were able to both uh, get out of it and I'm very thankful to that bloodwood I think it was tree but, uh, just pulled my butt out of the fire I'm just gonna retrieve the winch just thankfully I don't have to do much to do that So these are the holes that I dug in there. I'm not actually sure where the rubber is. There it is. I mean, just look how much my feet are sinking in. There's part of the rubber. Where's the rest of it? Ah! Uh, I don't feel it there. Maybe it's still attached to the tire. Have a look at that. Torn. Torn and ripped and shredded. Part of the other one. It's half of it. I have a bit of a dig in here, see if I can feel it. Is that it? Yep, there it is. Now imagine I didn't have a winch and this is what I was relying on to get me out. This stuff is so boggy. I just nearly lost my shoe. Imagine if I was relying on these to get me out. How long do you reckon I'd be stuck here for? This is not a track that's well used. Just so happens I've got a sat phone and I was able to contact my manager. And he's on his way out. I just placed my phone on the dash again. Go down. Hang on. Just gonna hold it in a second now until we get out the other side. Oh, there we go. Third. You hear it grizzling and beeping at me. Doesn't like having one track grabber on. Alright. Oh, fell down again. All right, first thing I need to do is ring my boss, let him know that I'm fine. Second thing I need to do is drink water. Third thing I need to do is remove the track grabbers. Fourth thing I need to do is drink more water. 
and get the fuck home. Excuse my language. Alright. I've just got the tracks off. I want you to understand like how much liquid I've lost. I've only been bogged for maybe half an hour. And um, I've lost so much liquid. Uh, and it's winter still, you know, like it's, this is our coldest time of year, really. And it's a bit warmer than it was, say, middle of July, but, oh, I'm sweating so hard. It's supposed to be like 24 or 25 today. That's all. And uh, just how quickly things can go really, really poorly for you is all based on how much liquid you lose and how quickly. Anyway, I've got to get home. It's uh, 2.30 now and uh, I'm knackered. I really, I'm so close to this place that I wanted to just take a quick look at this job, see if I can get it done while I'm here. Um, but I'm gonna have to find another track out um, up on that uh, naturey, strippy area that's not a road because it's much harder up there. There is another track on the other side of the fence too that, that maybe I can use that. But, uh, all right, I'm gonna get myself out of here and I'll talk to you in a little while. Cheers. All right, so I finally got to the job site, doing my job. Thankfully, I, hopefully it won't take too long, somewhere between thankfully and hopefully. Uh, I'm just waiting for the system to program itself. Anyway, you don't need to know about that. See the flies are, are fairly hectic. Um, yeah, I just wanted to talk about those track grabbers again. Like we did a video um, earlier in July. Uh, when I say we, it's my friends came out with me, Matt, other Matt, uh, and Josh, and Deborah and Lucy were there too. And we we got the the track grabbers out for the first time, and we put them on and we gave them a go, uh, just to see how they'd go. And they didn't get us out. Uh, in that river. Now it's worth going and have a look at that, that video and you'll you'll see all the details. I mean yeah it was a good fun day with the guys um, but it was important too because I knew going in to put them on this time around that they're not a, a silver bullet solution not by any stretch of the imagination. Um, granted I didn't know they would self-destruct as badly as they did uh, but I knew that they were um, something to try, but they definitely weren't just going to pop us straight out of the hole and, and off we go. So I think it's important to point out that you know we we don't just go and get ourselves bogged to test stuff for the hell of it and just to kill time or whatever, but it actually serves a purpose. Um, it gets us familiar with our equipment and also tells us hopefully the limitations of our equipment. There's no good us going out getting bogged in somewhere where we know that we can get out of reasonably easily. It makes sense for us to put ourselves in those situations where we're still close to town and got um, standby cars and got extra help there and everything. But it makes sense to put ourselves in situations where we really test the limits of our equipment so that we know whether it's going to hold up or not. Um, yeah, I'm disappointed. I was hoping that these track grabbers would be a, a replacement to Max Tracks. Um, but yeah, not so much. So I'm going to get rid of the Max Tracks I've got, throw them out, because they're the, the knockoff ones. I'm going to get the legit ones, I think, and I'm going to give them a try. Um, we'll probably go back out to Road Creek and get horrendously bogged again. And just give the max tracks a go because yeah it's important to know what we have and, and what we can use to get ourselves out um, very very thankful for the winch that we had today but there's no guarantee we'll always have that I don't have that on the trailblazer um, and yeah so there's no guarantee that we'll always have a winch handy well guys I'm gonna leave you with that uh, unless something exciting happens here's hopefully not I'm hoping not uh, I do have a night job tonight, um, North Stewart High, about 100 k's north of town, Con as well. Um, I'm going to take the GoPros with me, try and do some more night lapses, 
time lapses at night. Um, I'm aware that the one in the last video is pretty dark and I didn't want to put any music over it because when you view it on a bright screen it is it's pretty specky. So I just wanted it to be uh, standalone but I know that uh, a few people have got in contact to say oh there's a big blank section in the middle of your last video. It's not blank, there is actually stars and stuff moving but you just need a bright enough screen to see it. So sorry about that but I will try that again. Um, if I have success, it will be right now.